Much has been written about the significance of the latter in Jacob's dream in this parasha. This is not just a dream, but a divine revelation in which God speaks to Jacob directly for the first time, promising him that he will take his place in the family covenant. The Midrash Agadah teaches that the word for the latter, Sulam, has the same numerical value as the word Sinai, making the connection between Jacob's vision and the eventual national revelation at Sinai. The people stood at the foot of the mountain, Betachtit Hahar, just as Jacob laid at the bottom of the ladder. And the Midrash compares the angels going up and down the ladder to the divine messengers, Moses and Aaron, who traveled up and down Mount Sinai. So this was Jacob's personal Sinai moment, many generations, of course, before his descendants would experience the revelation at Sinai as a nation. It implies that this Sha'ar Hashamayim, this gate of heaven, as Jacob refers to it, is the progenitor of later divine encounters to come. Shabbat Shalom. We are now in the long stretch of the book of Genesis that deals with the stories of Yaakov and his family. Every Saturday night, in a little-known and little-used page on the Sidur, there is a song that we sing after Havdalah called Amar Hashem Yaakov, and God said to Yaakov, Al Tira Avdi Yaakov, don't fear my servant Jacob. In other words, don't fear my people Israel, because God will look after us. This is a song that is based on hints in different scriptural verses dealing with Yaakov and various episodes in his life story. And I'm happy to share it with you now. Amar Hashem le-Yakov Al Tirav di-Yakov Bachar Hashem le-Yakov Al Tirav di-Yakov Gal Hashem et-Yakov Al Tirav Darach kochav miyakov Al tirav diyakov Abayim yashresh yakov Al tirav diyakov Eyerd miyakov Al tirav diyakov Zichor zot le-yakov Al tirav di-yakov Chedvat yeshuam di-yakov Al tirav di-yakov Shabbat Shalom and a good week to you and all you love. What can we learn from this comparison of Jacob's ladder and the revelation at Sinai? Rabbanit Alyssa Thomas Newborn, my colleague in LA, 
notes that the site upon which Jacob experiences this vision is called only the place, Hamakom. She quotes a commentary that observes that this is simply a place, it has no name, because Jacob rested there by happenstance. It wasn't planned. Spontaneously he rested, and it ended up being the place of a transformational spiritual encounter. Rabbi Alyssa writes, often the holiest and most meaningful moments are those that just happen. Experiences or encounters that we don't plan, but that occur naturally and easily, and yet forever impact us. By emphasizing the importance of this kind of moment, our Torah text is highlighting this universal experience and challenging us to cultivate sensitivity to the mundane, overlooked moments we stumble upon that may actually end up being the most powerful of our lives. This may be the key to understanding the comparison of Jacob's dream to the revelation at Sinai. One was completely spontaneous and individual. The other was meticulously planned with three days of preparation and was experienced collectively. These are two very different spiritual experiences. The Sinai moment reminds me of the high holidays, which require immense spiritual preparation and an investment of time and energy. It is something we experience as a collective. Jacob's dream is perhaps akin to the spontaneous aha moment, maybe in private daily prayer or even while walking in the park. Both of these, the planned collective experience as well as the spontaneous individual one, combine to create the contours of our spiritual lives as Jews. Shabbat Shalom.